Cool. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, beyond NBC. You know, so what what do you do when you out when you, when you have outgrown NBC? Um, I know we all know what NBC is. Uh, about a year ago, I started researching the history of it, what it actually meant, and found out that most web frameworks actually are using it incorrectly. Um, especially in PHP, we shove all of our data, you know, access layer and all of that inside of inside of our models, which is technically incorrect. Um, but we're going to cover some of this stuff. And what do you do when when NBC just doesn't work for you anymore? So anybody that doesn't know me by now, then uh, I'm sorry. I'm Stephen Way, and I work uh, at Material Link. It's a senior software engineer, seven years experience in PHP, and the last two and a half I've specifically been working in application development. Um, I, my current position, we're, we're writing enterprise level software uh, for a billion dollar company, multi billion dollar company, which is, not, you know, interesting. Uh, and we're also migrating an entire legacy system over to Laravel and architecting for better, you know, best practices, scalability, and growth. So, what is MVC? It is an architectural pattern that divides an application into three interconnected parts. That's the Wikipedia dictionary version of it. Um, but we'll break down those parts here with the model. Uh, the model represents your logic, um, it's knowledge, it's a single object, and it maintains state. Again, I said we tend to throw other things into the model, um, specifically we pair it, normally pair it with our database layer. The view is the presentation layer. Um, it accepts input from the controller or model, and it presents data output. Controller. Controller is the middleman. It's the glue between the request. Uh, yeah, thanks. I think Ryan just crashed my computer. Live coding. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ryan. It's the number two. <laughs> we can edit this out. All of Ryan's goodness. Um, so, anyways, the controller is the middleman. It takes the input from the request. It goes out, connects with the model, grabs your data, uh, converts it, commands whatever you're going to read, write to the model. Takes that information back from that, sends it to the view. Uh, the view does its thing. It, Gets the you know sends the HTML process to HTML back to the controller and then it sends the response back to the browser. Um, MVC is is really great for small websites or basic CRUD applications. Um, if you're building anything larger than these, it fails. Um, you're trying to build larger applications, it just it, you outgrow it quickly. And so, what do you do with that? Um, well, all of that boils down to following. Uh, well, we'll get to that. So anyways, you get controller bloat when you start thinking about this. Um, controller bloat, controllers are actually meant to be nothing more than HTTP glue. They just pass your, uh, gather the request data, pass it to something else, and return response. No logic should be in your controllers. Um, if you get beyond that, that's why we get the bloat. You know, we start getting controller bloat, with that easily leads to model bloat. Um, you know, you get logic in your, uh, your views, and we end up with something like this. So an example of controller bloat. This was actually taken from the first pass of the Upstate PHP website. Uh, this was the, the method to create a new sponsor for the group. Um, so we just gather input requests. Can you, can you see that? You can just use two figures. Just, I'm not even going to try that. Zoom, man. Zoom. Oh, look, it scrolls. <laughs> yeah. OK, never mind. So we gather the input. Um, if we have a file, then we need to create a hash name for the file, we need to get the path of it, we're going to create an image of it, resize it, save the file, update the input, then we're going to create the actual model instance and then redirect back. Well, there's way too much logic going on inside of this controller, so we easily have controller bloat. But it doesn't stop there. You get, again, like I said, controller bloat fat models, and you get logic within your views. And we end up with something like that, which we do not want. So this is your typical MVC bloated flow. Your request comes in, uh, you hit the router, you process the, the route, you send it to the proper controller. Uh, your bloated controller processes using some business logic, sends out some requests to your bloated model. Your model does, again, some processing, gets you the data back, sends you back to the controller, send that to the view. Your view probably has some presentation logic of ifs, whatever. Um, you know, maybe incorporating even subviews inside of that. That sends the, you know, the, the HTML back to the controller. And then it, finally, you get your response back. Um, 
So how do we put our code on a diet? Well, it all boils down to following the solid principles. Um, single responsibility, open close, list cost substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. If you're not familiar with these, these are the basics of, uh, of programming. And it's taken me the last two years of really studying the last four of those to really understand them. The single responsibility was super easy. The others take a little time. But with those and using that as our base as, and as our, uh, our starting point, we can move beyond MVC. And specifically, I'm going to cover two, uh, two patterns that will help us with this, will be the command bus and repository pattern. Has anybody heard of these two? You? And you? Cool. All right, so these two actually follow uh, what's known as CQS, the command query separation, uh, which states that every method should either be a command that performs an action or a query that returns data to the caller, but not both. So you're separating out your two you know, pieces of logic. So command bus is typically used for writing data. Uh, whereas on the opposite side of that, your repository pattern is generically for reads. Uh, the repository is for another abstraction of your data layer. Um, with the command bus, the command bus consists of, well, the command bus is actually an architectural and uh, it's actually a utility itself, but it consists of commands and command handlers. Um, commands themselves are simple logicless DTOs, data transfer objects. Um, they just take, you know, the plain old simple PHP objects. They just intake input data and they pass it along. Um, commands are generally paired with one handler uh, that will process the information. So let's give an example here. Uh, in our example to do app, we're going to gather all of our input. We're going to create our validation rules. We're going to run it through our validator, check to see if it fails. If, we, if it does, we're going to throw an exception. Uh, or any kind of error we can listen to. If it passes to that point, then we can actually pass the data to our model and create the instance. But again, this is controllable. So we can refactor that using command bus um, to this. We just pass our data to the command bus, to the execute command, tell it which command to execute, and we give it the input data. Um, convention dictates that our commands are generally paired with the name of the command with the handler appended to it on the end. So an example of our command is just, again, a plain PHP object. You pass the parameters through to the constructor, and you set them as public pr uh, properties. No logic within these at all. Now here's your an example of your handler. So the command, a command bus actually takes your command, pairs it with the handler, passes the command to the handler, and then the handle method on the handler um, will actually take and do what we did in our controller. It will gather the input, run validator, check to see if it passes, and then it'll interact with our model or our data storage layer and, uh, and actually store it out for us. But I know what everybody's gonna say, which is what I said at first, you know, now our control bloat is actually within our handler. So what did we do? We just abstract it out and we have two extra layers of the same exact thing. But we can refactor that. Uh, we can use the decorator pattern, which if you haven't heard that, it's uh, basically what you do is you'll have one object that's, this follows the open close principle. Once you create your class, you don't, you know, it's open for extension, right, and closed for modification, correct? Uh, so the idea is you never go back in and edit. You're breaking changes at that point. So you create a decorator, you wrap that in new functionality, process the new functionality, and then down the line call your previous class. And that's what we'll do here. With this particular example of a command bus, which is uh, Jeffrey Way's command, uh, commander package, um, you know, it takes in a co the, the first parameter, it takes this command, then the input, and then any, uh, any decorators that we want to wrap it in. So we can create a to-do validator, uh, a validation decorator that we wrap it first. The validator will then call, after all validation is done, it will actually call the command handler um, for us. And so we're adding layers on top of. So now our handler, uh, our handle method actually is a simple creation straight to the database. Very clean again. So now our command flow is a request comes in, we go to the router, we hit the appropriate controller, we run it then to the command bus, which then passes to the validator, and then the validator then passes down to the handler. And then we return our response. So it's very lean, very slick, very easy, very quick, and easy to maintain and test. So now we've taken our code on what we don't want, and we've taken it and put it on a diet, 
to what we do want. Um, going on to the opposite side, of repositories, repository pattern. It's an implementation of a brokering layer between the application and the data source. Basically, we're abstracting out our, our data layer. And this is a horrible example, but we're going to go with our to-do list. And to say we want to show our whole to-do list, you know, it's very easy to just get in there with a short application and we start, you know, hitting our model. We start going through our query builder and say, okay, order by this, get this. But then as time goes on and the needs, you know, business needs grow, you start adding more and more to it. And you say, well, I needed to do this. And query on this or but not where this or whatever and then if you are also showing that list elsewhere then you have to anytime you make a change you have to go and update that same piece of code anytime you want to show that list uh, a, a way around that is putting that in within your model which most people will do but then that breaks you know what we're trying to do with this um, and also we're again tightly coupled to the model in that instance um, so what if we want to do you know switch our, mod our database that's always the example they give you but no one ever really just on a whim switches their database. But another real world example is going from you know, a MySQL database on one side of it, but then you're also using a caching layer. And we can accomplish an interchangeability with that with a repository. So by moving those, that code to the repository, um, you know, we then inside of any time we need it, inside of our controller here, we just target the repository and then target the method that we need to retrieve the data. Um, and again, following another one of the base solid principles here is we're going to code to a contract. We create our repository as an interface with the methods that we need on it, uh, which are get list and find by ID and anything else you may need. Um, and you can see, again, immediately two implementations. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a MySQL to-do repository and memcache to-do repository. And so as you, you know, use it dependency injection and you type hint on to-do to repository, you can always count on, no matter where you're getting it, from the live data from the database or a cached version of it, you can still call the same method and still get the same results back. So you're abstracting that out and putting the logic within the implementation. So your pros, again, are you abstracting out uh, the persistence layer from the application? It's giving you a lot more flexibility and it's easier to unit test. Um, the cons, it is adding another layer of abstraction to your application. Um, but again, that's you. We have to be aware of where you're going to use it, where it's appropriate. Larger applications or anywhere you are using interchangeable data layers, it is appropriate. So those are two of the ones we wanted to detail with. These are some of the more common ones. There's a t there are tons of de design patterns out there, but these are some of the common ones uh, you run into a lot normally in the, in the field. The factory pattern, builder, an adapter, decorator, as we quickly ma uh, mentioned, and the facade pattern. Um, they all tend to break into categories of creational, behavioral, and structural. Um, so there are some good resources I'll throw out there as well that covers some of these, um, but we won't get into that in this. So again, to reflect, we've got MVC is good for small projects, uh, but when it grows beyond that, and it starts, when, basically when it starts breaking any one of the solid principles, that's where you might want to start looking beyond MVC and start incorporating other design uh, design patterns into your application.